Hey everybody, I'm here to welcome you to the future. Hey, I hope you have your favorite beverage handy and you're ready for a good time because let's face it, if you don't, I'm probably the only one that's going to really enjoy this segment. Why is lighting that protects our skies and keeps them dark so important to us? Well, there are adverse effects on humans and animals, but I'm here to tell you a story. It was a dark and stormy night. Actually, it was a perfectly clear day. You see, my in-laws are from Washington State, and they were a part of a program sponsored by their local college nearby that housed foreign exchange students. So when they picked up their two students who flew in earlier that evening from Japan, what was the first thing they wanted to experience? Oh, you can eat buffet. Well, it was getting late. So after showing off how much an American can eat in one sitting, they decided to head for home. Lo and behold, when they exited the restaurant, they happened to look up at the night sky. And guess what they said? What are those? Yep. To my in-laws' amazement, these two students had only ever seen stars in books. They'd never seen them with their actual eyes. Now we hear people say all the time, we need to save the dark skies for future generations, but I wanna see them too, and I bet you do as well. So what can we do to preserve the night skies? What can you and I do as individuals? There's good lighting and there's bad lighting. But how can you tell the difference? You know, there are folks out there that despise the idea of people telling them what they can and cannot do. If I want to put a light up in my yard, make it as bright as I want, that's my right. America. But if we all did whatever we wanted to, whenever we wanted to. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Thank you, Dr. Venkman. Here's the good news. We, the people, don't have to get rid of all of our lighting to maintain dark skies. We just have to be smart about it. Here's where the display comes in. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to see which of these three lighting contenders works best for seeing this guy. Introducing lighting contender number one. Worst lighting. Well, of course it sounds terrible when you introduce it that way. It's actually not so great for seeing what it's supposed to light up, and it kind of hurts my eyes. Contender number two, not good lighting. As you can see, it's a little bit better, but the light's still right in my face, making it hard to see what it's supposed to be illuminating. Sorry, dude. And finally, contestant number three, the best lighting. Now, as you can see with this one, the light is all aimed right where you want it. There's nothing coming out and hitting me in the face. It's not blinding me. I can get way back here, really close to it, and it doesn't matter. The light's not blinding me. It's all going directly where I want it to go so I can see what it was intended to actually illuminate. Now you'll notice in that display that the first two were unshielded and the last one was shielded. But you'll also notice that the first two went from extraordinarily white blue light and it eventually got warmer. When we got to the shielded one, it was very warm, uh, inviting light. So as far as color goes, when we're replacing our light bulbs outdoors, um, in our driveways, in our security lights, at our porches, how do we know what color we should be getting? Now, when I'm at the local hardware store and I'm running down the lighting aisle, I don't mean to brag, but I'm a pretty popular guy and I know what I'm looking for. And today, I'm gonna help you find what kind of light you need for your outdoor lighting. I have here a package of lights that I purchased for some floodlights that I want to put in my security uh, fixtures outside on my porch. So um, these are smaller floods, but what I really want to know is, are these going to be warm enough light? So when you look on the back of most packages, it'll have an index that shows you whether it's a warm light or a really white blue light. And the, the white 
lights, the ones that are on the blue spectrum are what we're trying to avoid. And you'll notice in some of the other presentations that that blue light reflects right off of almost everything and scatters right into the night sky. That's where it starts to blind us from being able to see the stars. And it, uh, it's where it has the most negative impact on our animal life, of course. And there are all kinds of health hazards for both us and for that wildlife. But you'll notice on the bottom of the spectrum, the very beginning is uh, a warm light. It says, it says warm and appears as cool. And then it has a number, a corresponding number that tells you uh, how warm it is or how cool it is. Now that number is on, on what we call the Kelvin scale. So on this particular case, uh, this package says 2600 Kelvin. That's pretty warm. And as you even go lower on some of the other stuff, you can get down to, to the uh, 1800s and below. And as you go up here, a typical really white light or what you would see at your typical store, uh, it would say daylight. And that's 5,000 Kelvin. So the lower that number, the warmer it gets. And that's what you want. You want it to be warm. So here's the good news, folks. When you purchase a light that's on the warmer side of the Kelvin spectrum at 3000 Kelvin or below, which is what the International Dark Sky Association is recommending, that it be no higher than 3000, um, that we're protecting our dark skies. We're keeping that warm ambient amber light present and we're not losing any lumens. That's the great thing. A lot of people think when you get the warmer lights, you're losing the amount of light that it's actually producing and that's not so. You're getting just as many lumens on a warm amber colored light as you would on one of those really harsh white lights. So keep it at 3000 Kelvin or below. And I do recommend below. Get into that uh, 2500 range. It's gonna be beautiful. You're gonna enjoy it. And it's going to protect you just like the white light would. And it's also going to protect the animals and our dark skies. So in conclusion, here are three rules of thumb for all of us to play our part in protecting our view of those beautiful night skies and stars and planets that we love to view. Rule of thumb number one, keep that lighting at 3000 Kelvin or less. Rule of thumb number two, keep all of your lighting fixtures shielded. And rule of thumb number three, <laughs> Always keep your lighting pointed down. You follow those three rules and we're all going to be playing our own parts and protecting our night skies. Thanks for spending some time with me, your local lighting expert. And until next time, enjoy that beverage. And remember, never take for granted the beauty of our dark skies.